goblet squat. You're gonna grab your weight and place it close to your chest. Now this doesn't have to be a dumbbell, this could be a pound of flour, this could be a water bottle, anything will do, but just keep it close to your chest, elbows are tucked in, shoulders are down. Come into your normal squat stance, so that's my feet outside, shoulders apart, toes are slightly wide, I bring my hips down to the level of my knees, I squeeze my glutes, and I press up. Now I'm gonna show you this to you from the side. So the thing with the goblet squat is that you're front loaded, so you're gonna to want to round the spine a bit. So you are going to maintain a strong spine, abs are going to be engaged, and you're going to hold your breath to prevent any rounding. So let's do that. Let's hold breath. Come on down, squeeze the glutes, exhale. And that is your goblet squat. This is your butterfly crunch. You're gonna come onto your back, bring your heels together, and bring your knees apart. From here, I want you to come on down, and you're going to think about tucking the pelvis as you come up, curling into a crunch, and back down. The hands are just lightly behind the head. They're not pulling on the neck. Your shoulder blades are curling off the ground by themselves. You're not yanking or anything. Now, with the butterfly crunch, you should feel this a little bit more into the lower abs than the top abs. They really want you pulling in the belly and pressing that lower back into the floor. And that is a butterfly crunch. This is your overhead press test. So go grab a pen and paper, something to record how many repetitions you are able to do in one minute's time. So remember, only a rep with perfect form counts. So reminder of what that looks like. With an overhead press, you're gonna start with the weights in the front rack position. You press overhead, biceps are in line with the ears, and you bring them back down. Ribs are not flaring. You wanna keep the ribs and the hips stacked. Now, record what weight you're using for this exercise. So if that's a dumbbell, or maybe it's a can, or a wine bottle, just make sure you make a note of how much weight that is and how many reps, and then we'll retest later. This is just a benchmark for where you're at today. Good luck. This is your modified push-up. You wanna start with finding an elevated surface. So that may be a countertop, or maybe a bar stool, that may be your couch. The higher the incline, the easier the exercise is. So pick a surface that makes the most sense for your level right now. As you progress, you can come lower and lower down to the ground until finally you're doing your perfect push-up on the floor. So next thing I wanna talk about is setting up the position. So I'm gonna bring my feet together. I'm gonna squeeze my inner thighs, squeezing my butt, holding my abs in. This is going to set you up for that perfect plank position, which is the starting point of a push-up. Notice that my hips are not pushing back. It's probably what I see most commonly in a push-up is you're trying to make it easier by hiking the hips. Don't. Press the hips forward and keep them in that perfectly straight line the entire time as you lower yourself down and up. Make sure that the chin does not start tucking into the chest. You wanna keep it, your eyes out in front of you. Now, arm position. You don't want your hands to be directly underneath the shoulders. Just a little bit outward for that is perfect. You also don't wanna to be too, too wide either. So just outside that shoulder width, you also wanna make sure that the elbows are not coming at the same level as your shoulder. You wanna suck it in and bring the elbow to about 45 degree angle, to a 45 degree angle from your rib cage. Yes, yeah, so you're pushing away like this. Well, let's put it all together. In my plank position, coming to that 45 degree angle, my chin is not tucked, I exhale. So the breathing is inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Again, as you progress through this, you'll get lower and lower down to the ground until finally you're doing your push-up. And that is your modified push-up. This is your chest press. You're gonna come onto your back and grab your dumbbell. Plant the feet firmly on the ground. Bring the elbows to be at about a 45 degree angle. So just like your push-up, you don't want the elbows at shoulder level and you don't want them hugging the wrist. So get the 45 degree angle and make sure that the dumbbell is in line with the bicep so it's not turning any sort of other way. Next thing, you're going to hold the breath, exhale, as you press up, squeeze the weight together and inhale on your way down. Pressing up and inhale on the way down. So what you want to feel here is your pecs working, so that's your chest and the front of the shoulders. 
something that I like to say to my clients is imagine that you're trying to crack a walnut between your chest plates and you'll get that sensation. Now, if you want to make this a little harder, you can float the feet up to a tabletop position while you're doing this. Draw the belly button in and make sure that your back is flat on the ground. And that is your chest press. This is your burpee. All the burpee is is a group of movements that you already know. So I'm gonna turn to the side here. First movement is a squat. So keeping the spine straight, I'm gonna lower down until my palms hit the ground. From here, I'm going to step back into a plank. Next movement, I'm going to step my foot onto the outside of my hand to return back to that low squat position, keeping my spine straight. From here, I'm going to come on up standing. And that's it. So we're gonna fast forward that. You're gonna press the palms down to the ground, shoot out to a plank, hip foot, step to the outside of the hand, and you come back up. Now, what happens a lot is that you start rounding on the way up, and I don't want that for your spine. So a quick fix that you can do is come over to an elevated surface. So that could be a couch, maybe it's a um, ottoman, something that can just bring your hands up a little higher. What that looks like, you're gonna put your hands down here, step out, step in, and up. Notice that that keeps my spine in a really straight position. As you progress this, you can go faster, or you can have the option of jumping out and in and up. Again, that's a progression, but now you know how to start with that modified burpee. This is your Superman. Go on down to your belly, extend your arms out overhead, draw the forehead to the ground, pull the belly button in towards your spine. Together, you're going to lift up your upper body and lower body, squeezing the glutes, feeling the lower back strengthen and lower back down. Make sure that you're looking out in front of you and not tucking the chin down. You want a nice neutral neck and back down. If this is too much for you, maybe just raise the legs, just raise the upper body, put it together when you are ready. And that is your Superman. This is your bird dog. First come into a tabletop position. So that means your wrists are directly underneath the shoulder and your knees are directly underneath the hips. I want you to pull the shoulders away from your ears, pull the abs in. This is your starting position. Get a firm grip into the floor with your fingertips. You're going to extend one leg back and the opposite arm forward. From here, curl the spine and bring the knee to the elbow. Extend out, come back. Out, in, out, back. Just keep the shoulders away from the ears. Something that I see all the time is that as you start rounding, the shoulders start creeping up to the ear. Pull it away. This is creating stability in the hips and the shoulder joint. Out, in, out, and down. Pull the abs in. This is a great core exercise and total body exercise. 